devices are silenced. Today's ceremony will celebrate the transition of leadership here at the nation's premier military education and leader development institution, from Major General Frederick M. Padilla, 15th President of the National Defense University, to Vice Admiral Frederick J. Rogie. For our military guests, today's ceremony is an uncovered indoor ceremony. Therefore, no salutes will be required. The Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General Joseph F. Dunford, Jr., will be the presiding official. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all, all our distinguished guests, NDU senior leaders, staff, faculty, and students of the National Defense University and the broader military education enterprise, and most importantly, the friends, family, and colleagues of Major General Padilla and Vice Admiral Rogi, who are here today to witness this important event. General Padilla and Admiral Rogi made donations to support the Wounded Warrior Project in lieu of flowers for this ceremony. As we all get settled, I invite your attention to this short video which highlights the unique strategic value of the National Defense University. How does a nation prepare to meet new challenges and threats in an uncertain world? By developing national security leaders who think strategically, who understand and can employ all the elements of national power, who can create strategic solutions, and who can build coalitions while integrating the diverse cultures of our interagency and international partners. In short, we prepare for tomorrow's challenges by investing in the development of our national security leaders today. Tucked away in Southwest Washington, D.C. is a hidden gem of national security. The National Defense University is the military academy that provides a hedge against uncertainty by developing leaders prepared to handle the nation's most difficult national security challenges in an ever more dynamic and complex environment. General Colin Powell, who served as Secretary of State and Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, was a member of NDU's first graduating class in 1976. In reflecting on his time here, he said this. It was so essential to my future to get everything I could here because when I learned about politics, public relations, international relations, the contributions that other services make to what the Army might be doing and how we help them, it made me ready for whatever might come along in my career. Students come from around the world to study at NDU. Why? From the student's perspective, there is no better place on earth to become a senior strategic leader, to acquire the knowledge, critical thinking skills, academic background, and experience the rich diversity of perspectives that are essential to national security leaders. And there is another important quality to the NDU experience. It's less visible, but no less important. In describing it, General Powell said, the greatest contribution perhaps, besides what I learned as a student, was the experience I had with my fellow classmates. Most of us recently back from Vietnam or somewhere else. And we got the learning, but we did more than just get the learning. We learned from each other. We learned the importance of the contributions that each of us make from our different services. We became a team. We became a real, a real group of fellows who would be with each other for many years to come. And it turned out that that challenge came to us in the form of Desert Storm. And if you were to go down the list of my colleagues from that War College class of 1976, you would find that so many of us came together to fight Desert Storm. We were all lieutenant colonels together. We know each other. We know each other intimately. And this brotherhood that existed among us has continued in the 40 years since. The strategic leadership team that made Desert Storm a success was born at NDU. And NDU continues to serve as the proving ground for the nation's defense. Since 9-11, NDU has created an international network of more than 8,500 security professionals from more than 75 nations. These individuals together form a global network 
of security practitioners who share a common experience, speak a common professional language, and are ready to work together on the thorniest strategic challenges. Today, NDU's mission is to develop joint warfighters and other national security leaders through rigorous academics, research, and engagement to serve the common defense. As the chairman's university, the path we follow is set by his vision that NDU creates strategic advantage by developing joint warfighters and other national security leaders and forging relationships through whole of nations and whole of government education programs, research, and engagement. NDU delivers rigorous education and professional development through seminar discussions enriched by deep individual study, experiential learning, and candid engagement with senior leaders and scholars from across the U.S. and the international security enterprise. There is no better place to teach, train, and test our most senior leaders. And why is that? Because NDU provides unique value that comes from the combination of location, focus, and a diverse body of faculty and students who bring the widest range of professional experience and perspectives into every seminar. NDU's location in the nation's capital enables the meaningful engagement with colleagues and leaders from all of the military services, interagency and international partners, Congress, the Supreme Court, and the White House. An NDU education is also uniquely valuable because of our holistic approach to strategic security challenges. We help students develop the ability to create whole of government and whole of nation strategies to address the most difficult security challenges. Unlike typical civilian universities, students in NDU's master's programs average 43 years of age and bring 20 years of experience from a wide range of U.S. and international military services and government agencies. This adds a richness of perspectives that is unmatched and uniquely valuable in preparing leaders able to leverage all elements of national power in joint and combined operations. NDU is an internationally recognized graduate-level university with colleges and research centers that each provide a unique national security focus. We deliver education and professional development on the main campus at Fort McNair in Washington, D.C., on the Joint Forces Staff College campus in Norfolk, Virginia, programs at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, and at multiple combatant commands around the world. Today's NDU creates strategic advantage by developing joint warfighters and other national security leaders and forging relationships through whole of nations and whole of government education programs, research, and engagement. In short, NDU is the premier institution for developing and networking the next generation of strategic leaders for the United States and our partners. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the presentation of the colors, the national anthem, and the invocation. Lieutenant General Dunford would like to defer honors to Major General Padilla. Advance the colors.
Retire the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Kenneth Williams will now offer the invocation. One of the elements that makes the United States and all of our coalition partners strong is diversity. And so today, as I lead us in prayer, I invite you, whatever your tradition, to join with me according to your tradition in prayer. So let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, you are the ruler and commander of air, land, and sea. And using the words of the warrior statesman David of Bethany, of Bethlehem, I say, you train our hands for war and prepare us for battle. And you teach us to secure peace and safety for all of our populations so we may thrive and enjoy your grace and mercy. I thank you today for Major General Padilla and his compelling vision and uniting spirit in teaching and training national security leaders to go forth and secure the peace. I also thank you today for Vice Admiral Rogi and the unique skills and abilities that you have for afforded him throughout the years, preparing him for this very unique assignment, continuing to build on the foundation that has been laid. May this ceremony, the words that are spoken and the memories recalled, serve to remind us of the legacy of public service, of working for the common good, of securing trust and faith in our established leaders and institutions. God bless this ceremony and all the participants. Amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to introduce General Joseph F. Dumford, Jr., the 19th Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Hey, good, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and most importantly to the National Defense University team. Uh, thanks for being here as we mark the transition of authority from Major General Fred Padilla to Vice Admiral Fritz Rogge. You know, this, uh, this ceremony, for those of us in uniform, know that we, we do these kind of ceremonies to mark continuity uh, more than change. And, uh, and that's really what I, re what I like to refer to these events as, is, is marks of continuity. You know, tomorrow morning, uh, just like this morning, uh, the men and women in National Defense University are going to wake up. They're going to have confidence uh, in their leadership, and they're going to have commitment to growing uh, the war fighters and the senior strategic thinkers that we have tomorrow. There's a couple of folks, many folks are out here by definition are important, and I know that, uh, that both General Padilla and Emma Rogge will mention those. I do want to thank the Vice CNO uh, and Mrs. Moran for being here. Good to have you. And I, and I have to mention at least my J7, who has so much to do with our professional military education, Admiral Scott, for being here. Kevin, thanks. Thanks not for being here. This is where you would be. But thanks for all you do and your leadership in making sure our professional military education is on track. You know, today, uh, in addition to uh, just marking the continuity between, uh, between Major General Padilla and Admiral Rogge, is also a great opportunity to reflect and take stock of, an or of this organization's accomplishments. And I'd like to begin by just taking a few minutes to talk about the men and women of NDU. It's often said that today's strategic environment is more complex and volatile than any time since World War II. I've been in my job two years, and I'm not going to push back on that statement. I, I, I will accept that. And navigating today's environment while preparing for an uncertain uh, tomorrow is going to require strategic leaders that are not only technical experts, but individuals who can think broadly, critically, and creatively. And that's what NDU is all about, serving as a catalyst for strategic thought and developing strategic leaders. I've said many times over the past two years that the center of gravity here at the university is the real source of strength, if you will, is the faculty and staff that we're fortunate enough to have. 
And so to the faculty and staff here that gather here today, let me just tell you, what you do every day is really what gives us a true competitive advantage. You develop thoughtful leaders who can build coalitions and solve complex problems. Your research questions the status quo and it delivers solutions to our nation's most pressing challenges. Your passion inspires excellence. And aside from this afternoon's ceremony, today is a, really a typical day at NDU. Civilian and military faculty are educating nearly 1,000 students from 72 different countries in courses ranging from advanced strategic theory to the fundamentals of a healthy economic industrial base. Mentors at Capstone are shaping the next generation of senior leaders. At Joint Forces Staff College, instructors are preparing leaders from across the Joint Force to operate in a joint, combined, and interagency environment. Experts at the Center for Complex Operations are developing innovative ways to counter illicit networks. Researchers at the Center for Technology and National Security Policy are developing new ways to leverage prototyping and experimentation. And fellows from across NDU are leading dialogue on everything from nuclear nonproliferation to stabilizing Iraq in the aftermath of ISIS. The depth and breadth of activity across all five colleges, seven centers, and three regional centers is truly extraordinary. So to mo this morning, to the men and women of NDU, to the faculty and staff, uh, I just want you to know that your contributions are both recognized and appreciated. And if I haven't uh, expressed my appreciation sufficiently over the past two years, I can assure you it's more a reflection of my poor time management than it is an indication of, of your performance. And for those that are here from the faculty and staff, I just ask you to please stand up. There are two other groups uh, that I'd just like to take a moment to recognize, and that's the National Defense University Foundation and the Board of Visitors. And uh, my only message to both of those, in those groups are, one, thank you for your generosity and the time that you spend with the university. And number two, we really do listen uh, to the recommendations that you make, and you really have made us better, even when it's hard to listen. Uh, even when, the, when the, uh, the recommendations you make are difficult to implement, I want you to know you've had, you have made a difference, and I hope you recognize that. And I'd ask you to please stand up as well and please be recognized, because I, I do want to say thank you. You know, for the last uh, three years, the performance of NDU has reflected the visionary leadership of Major General Fred Padilla. And his service here at NDU is a significant milestone in a career that has lasted more than 35 years. And I've been fortunate enough to know Fred back from our uh, company grade days in the Six Marines back in the mid-1980s to having an opportunity, a front row seat to watch him in Operation Iraqi Freedom One. And I've had the privilege here over the past two years to watch him uh, again from the front row as he's led here at the National Defense University. And I think those of you who are here would, would agree that he's a man of tremendous character, a positive, persuasive leader who epitomizes the term warrior scholar. And over the last few years, he's leveraged a lifetime of study and operational experience to make a lasting contribution here at NDU. He arrived at a time of leadership turbulence, and he provided a steady hand. He served as an example of servant leadership to the faculty, to the staff, and to the students. He implemented substantial curriculum changes and he helped navigate a particularly challenging fiscal environment. And through his moral courage and persistence, his moral courage and persistence, he ensured that when we placed a proper priority on education, we were first to make difficult decisions. And you know, I'll, just as an aside, just tell you, particularly for the faculty and staff, as you know, uh, we have spent the last few years uh, looking across the Department of Defense to make cuts in headquarters. And somehow along the way, we started to equate professional military education in the National Defense University with headquarters read overhead. And uh, two or three times along the way here the last couple of years, uh, Major General Padilla has brought to my attention some of the cuts and the impact that they would have on our ability to deliver, which at the end of the day is what we do, deliver world-class education. So he's come to me and I said, okay, Fred, I got it. I'll, I'll provide some guidance. And, and uh, about every three or four months, uh, General Padilla at a capstone class or some other event when I was over here would put me in a headlock and say, hey, you told me, you told me you were going to take care of this. 
and you haven't done that yet. And I said, okay, well, I'm not sure who works for who here, but I got it. I'll go, I'll, I'll go, back, and, I'll go back and figure this out. And, uh, and I'm proud to tell you today, uh, I'm proud to tell you today that uh, it's all behind us. And, uh, and, and <laughs> it, it's all behind us, and, and, I, and I can assure you uh, that if I am reconfirmed, and uh, we'll find that out sometime here in the near future, but uh, we'll continue to prioritize education where it belongs at the top. And when you're at a period of fiscal challenges, the one place that you don't want to cut the one place you actually want to double down on is uh, professional military education, and we're going to do that. You know, <laughs> the, other, uh, the other thing that Fred understands uh, is what we describe as the center of gravity for the U.S. military. And uh, we say that our source of strength, I talked about the source of strength at NDU being the faculty and staff. But the source of strength for the U.S. military is really the network of allies and partners that we have built up since World War II. And, uh, and over the past couple of years, uh, Fred has placed proper emphasis on reaching out to more than 100 countries, some countries who have never before had a relationship with National Defense University, to make sure that we develop relationships today that will lead us well into the future in maintaining positive relationships and growing growing that network of allies and partners we have. And I think that many are here today that represent that. I can see many, many uniforms from our allies and partners out here. And I know there's an ambassador or two that have taken the time to join us as well. And, and again, I think that reflects the priority that General Padilla has put on allies and partners. But you know, you can't talk to Fred for more than five minutes without him sharing that he wouldn't be the leader that he is without incredible support at home. And that most especially comes from another friend of mine, uh, his wife, Cindy. And Cindy, uh, we happen to know from personal experience, watching you from the Camp Pendleton days, you've been there through the moves and you've been there through the separation, and you've been a great supporter of uh, countless military families, and, uh, and I want to thank you for your contribution as well. And, uh, and I want to thank you and, and Ellen sitting next to you for, uh, for sharing Fred with us. And, uh, and although most of the children aren't here, uh, Amy is here. Uh, a, a student who's just tearing it up down there at Quantico High, uh, I happen to know from personal experience, representing the family, and, and we're thankful to you, Amy, and to the other five Padilla children for sharing your dad with us. And, uh, and I'm happy to note today, without any, uh, without any specifics, that Major General Fred Padilla is going to be with us uh, for some years to come in positions of increased responsibility, and I couldn't be happier about that. But Fred, before you move on to the next objective, I hope that you and Cindy will just take a moment to catch your breath and reflect and to know that you've earned the admiration, the appreciation, and the affection of everyone that you have served with, and that includes uh, the Dunfords. Ladies and gentlemen, when it came time to select Fred's replacement, it was a very short conversation and a very easy pick. Given the complexity of the strategic environment, uh, the accelerating pace of change I mentioned a minute ago, and the demands that are going to be placed on our future leaders, we knew that NDU was going to require a special leader. And clearly we have that kind of leader in Vice Admiral Fritz Rogge. In 34 years of service, he's led through the Navy, commanding at the squadron and the group level. He's done staff tours in the operating forces with both Atlantic and Pacific submarine forces, and on the institutional side, he's done it all from legislative affairs to nuclear propulsion, from joint strategy and policy to Navy personnel. And he's also a deep thinker, and I think it's telling he has both the Masters of Science in Engineering Management and the Masters of Art in National Security and Strategic Studies. And I was speaking to a member of the foundation in the room uh, before, and, and she, she zeroed in on Amy studying science. She said, we need, uh, we need more people to study science to become leaders. And I said, actually, what we need is people that study science and art uh, to be leaders. And, uh, and Fritz Rogge is someone who combines the two. He's been a fellow at MIT, and he's advised Congress on reforming professional military education. So it's kind of hard for me to imagine a better, uh, a better pick to come over here at NDU than someone that combines that educational experience, that operational experience, and also that experience in helping to advance uh, professional military education in the Congress. All, all of those areas will, be, will hold you in good stead, Fritz, uh, over the next couple of years. And to Fritz's wife, uh, Julie, uh, welcome back to the National Capital Region. I hope we have a house for you soon. And, uh, and well, 
I, this is this is par for the course, right? And and welcome to National Defense University. And and Alex and Will, we're glad you're here. And I know as Northern Virginia residents, you're glad to have your mom and dad back to supervise you. I know it's been very difficult for you, <laughs> as uh, as men in your mid 20s to be without your mom and dad, you know, two miles away. But they'll be here and uh, and be formed and ready for inspection on Saturday morning. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, it is truly an honor for me to be here uh, to just for a few minutes recognize Fred Padilla's leadership and the you know, lasting contribution he's made at NDU and to welcome uh, Vice Admiral Fritz Rogge to NDU. And, and now I'm going to ask uh, General Padilla to join me at center stage so we can recognize uh, the contribution that he's made and then formally recognize the transfer of authority uh, between these two great leaders. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise as General Dunford will now present Major General Padilla with his end of tour award. Attention to award to all who shall see these presents greeting. This is to certify that the Secretary of Defense has awarded the Defense Superior Service Medal to Major General Frederick M. Padilla, United States Marine Corps, for exceptionally superior service while serving as President, National Defense University from November 2014 until September 2017. During the past three years, General Padilla significantly advanced the stature and prestige of this prominent military education institution. General Padilla ensured the university fulfilled its mandate to develop joint warfighters and other national security leaders through rigorous academics, research, and engagement to serve the common defense. He exhibited visionary leadership and masterfully commanded the university through a period of transformative organizational and cultural change through a challenging fiscal environment General Padilla empowered the university workforce through a talent management review process and improved coordination and cooperation across the entire enterprise. During his tenure, National Defense University was awarded the Joint Meritorious Unit Commendation for the education of 14,000 military officers, government civilians, international military officers, and students from private industry, and revitalizing the curriculum to ensure saliency and relevancy in a dynamic national security environment. One of General Padilla's most significant and lasting contributions was the success of his outreach efforts with our international partners. In addition to educating students from more than 101 countries and hosting visits from 92 international delegations, the university was a magnet for the international community and a principal venue for substantive discussions on international security issues. Additionally, General Padilla increased the prominence of the university through international engagements at the Conference of Commandants, the Regional Forum for Heads of Defense Universities, Institutes, and Colleges Meetings, and the Zhangshan Forum. The singularly distinctive accomplishments of Major General Padilla culminate a distinguished career in the service of his country and reflected great credit upon himself, the United States Marine Corps, and the Joint Staff. Given under my hand in the city of Washington this fifth day of September 2017, signed Joseph F. Dunford, Jr., Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 15th president of the National Defense University. Thank you. Thank you. I'd just like to take an opportunity to welcome everybody here. Uh, I'd like to welcome you know, all the general officers, flag officers. Um, I'd like to welcome ambassadors that are here, defense attaches that are here, uh, senior executive service members that are here. Uh, uh, friends and, and supporters of the National Defense University and to our tremendous staff and our faculty at the National Defense U University, family members, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I, you honor us by being here. Um, you know, General Dunford talked a little bit about the, what the purpose of a change of responsibility ceremony is all about. And, and it's really more about, it's not about any one individual, it's about looking at a, an organization where it's been, where it is, and where it's going. And that's really what, that's what we're here for today, to celebrate the National Defense University and, every, and everybody that's part of it and all, the, and all that you do every day uh, here at the National Defense University and, uh, you know, and, and, and to reflect back on where we've been, certainly over the last three years, but even before, but over the last three years, and then where we are right now, and General Dunford talked about, a little bit about that, and then where we're headed, and, and, and this is where Vice Admiral Rogge is gonna take, take it to the next level and, uh, 
and so it's a great day for the National Defense University. I, I, and I do have to say some thank yous, and uh, when I, as I do mention those, I, 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 uh, I remembered uh, the quarterback, Kurt Warner, when he, was, when he won the Super Bowl and he was the uh, MVP of the Super Bowl, and, and there was a rush of media folks that were coming to, sh to sh shove microphones in his face, and he, had been given, he was going to be given a lot of money to say, uh, you know, when they asked him, what are you going to do now, he was going to be given a lot of money to say, I'm, ho I'm going to Disney World. Well, th there's no one that's been offered me any money to say that today. <laughs> but I'm going to say what he said, and that is first things first. And the first thing is, I, I just want to thank God for the many blessings that we've had that we've, and, and, uh, and, and that continue to have. Secondly, I want to I thank my family. Uh, you know, my wife Cindy is here, and she has been a, a supporter, and she's been key uh, to everything to me over the years. And uh, and then our, my daughter Amy, who's um, who's represents her other five, her brother and four sisters that are out there: two Marines, one school teacher, two in business. Uh, and uh, we have a great family, family, and uh, and and just a small portion of them are here right now, but but they're they're very key. And I and I also have probably the best mom and dad anybody could ever have. And, and I have my own um, two, brother, two brothers and three sisters and nieces, nieces and nephews and uncles and aunts and all that. A big, you know, huge, uh, very uh, loud family, uh, but a very supportive family. And, uh, but right here, you, know, you're, you give meaning to everything that I do, and I love you very much. Uh, to, to General Dunford, sir, yeah, yeah, thank you for coming here today. You know, he does come, he comes here all the time. He comes for Capstone, Keystone, Pinnacle. He's been, you know, presidential lecture series. He came and, and did one of our graduations, you know, our big graduations. So he comes here all the time. And every time I, I see him, I say the same thing. Sir, I know how busy you are, so it means a lot. I don't have a clue how busy he is. <laughs> There's no way that I could get my arms around just how busy he is. But, but I can tell you that, um, you know, if there was ever a right person for the job, it's him. And, uh, we, we do go back an awful long way uh, back, and I remember as a lieutenant in uh, 3rd Battalion, 6th Marines, you know, looking at the captains that we had in that battalion, uh, and, there, and uh, of, the, of, the, of the captains, there was a Captain uh, Joe Dunford, there was a Captain Tom Waldhauser, there was a Captain Mark Organis, there was a Captain Jim Lukeman, and then our, our, uh, our battalion executive officer was uh, Major Terry Paul, and all of those individuals went on to be general officers, and some are still serving today. So I'm a second lieutenant in this battalion going, holy mackerel, this is a pretty good outfit. You know, it's, it's, you know, and, 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 but they, they were tremendous mentors and examples. And, and, uh, and it's really special for me to have General Dunford here because, you know, I've served with him in combat. And, and so as a lieutenant and then, and then as, a, as one of his battalion commanders in combat and then serve with him obviously now in this capacity. But he personifies everything we attempt to produce here. Someone who is... Who, who demonstrates absolute excellence in the tactical, in the operational, and at the strategic level. He, 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 he possesses all those skills. And, uh, and it's been, it's been uh, interesting and, and inspirational to watch him over the years. But I'll tell you another thing, there's not a more, there's not a, uh, a, 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 an officer serving in any service with more bravery than, uh, than General Dunford. Uh, and I could tell you that from firsthand experience and as, he, he, as a regimental commander showing up in places where mo most regimental commanders would never, would never go. And he right, was right there in the thick of things and, uh, and put himself in harm's way you know, to, to, to lead from the front. And he's been doing that as the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff as well, at, as well at the strategic level. So he's what, this is what we attempt to produce here, to educate those national security leaders and joint war fighters to be able to ascend to that level uh, through the rigorous academics and research and engagement and to, and to be able to cr create that strategic advantage. Uh, he's doing that uh, and, and he, he's the example. Uh, and, and it's great to have, Ellen, it's great to have you here. Uh, we, I, I, I was really happy when I found out that you were gonna be here. You know, obviously our families go back a long way when kids were all really little and we're, in, we're neighbors in the neighborhood. And, uh, but it's, um, Great to have you here, and, 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 and just as, as your, your husband is an example, you are too, and, and we really appreciate your service. Um, so to the command and uh, to the National Defense University, I've, I've already spoken a lot. You know, we did, we've just recently done some town hall, uh, some town hall sessions, and then we had the, uh, 
you know, I met with some of the councils as well, and, and I've pretty much said my goodbyes. Uh, but I do want to say that um, you are, I'm, I'm not, I'm going to, I'm going to, I am going to close out again and say, reiterate that, that uh, you are pros. You, you are, uh, you are what, what this university is all about, the tremendous staff and the tremendous faculty here, and what you do day in and day out. And uh, uh, you, you are a national treasure. You know, I was talking to General Jansen, we were talking about the Eisenhower School and about being a national asset. And, and, and I said, hey, that, that really resonates to me. And, and, and this organization is and should aspire to continue to be a national asset. But in, in so doing, not only are we a national asset, but I would submit that this place and everybody that works in it is a national treasure. And, and so, uh, to the, again, one, once again, to the staff and faculty here at the National Defense University, uh, it has been my, my honor to be associated with you. Uh, I have to also thank a, a lot of the uh, supporters. And when I mean supporters, obviously the, uh, the BOV, uh, the, the Board of Visitors, tremendous supporters, uh, the NDU Foundation, uh, can't do what we do without the foundation. We just can't. And the Board of Visitors, I mean, it, it, a lot of what we have done, a lot of this vision that you've heard uh, about has at least, at the very least, been informed by recommendations and guidance from the, from the Board of Visitors and the foundation, too. Uh, and so you're critical to this, to this organization, and, and so I, I really appreciate uh, all that you've done. Um, to Admiral Scott and the J-7, I, I, see, I, think I saw Pat Shaw and, and uh, Jerry Lyons here as well. Uh, the, to the J-7 team, thanks so much for everything you do for the university. Uh, it, it, has been, uh, it has been a great working relationship, and, and uh, we've been, you know, to some degree, some days it seems like we're tilting at windmills. Other days we're making, we're, we feel like we're doing broken field running and gaining some big yards. So, uh, you, but, but I think with every step, uh, with every step that we get knocked back, we're, we've taken three steps forward, and, and I, I think the university is in a really good place right now because of that. To, I, I, to, again, to the defense attaches who are here, thank you all for being here and for your friendship uh, over, over time since you've been here. Uh, it has been critical, the relationship that we have with you all and the, and that, and, and the students that we have here, it has ab absolutely been critical. And I, and I think that that's what sets the National Defense University apart from maybe some of our peer organizations, the, the international dimension to it. You know, again, I, I, my, my big, my big, uh, uh, bumper sticker speeches, you know, hey, we're, we're, we are divided into six. We have one six uh, Army, one six Air Force, one six Maritime, one six interagency. So we have a lot of folks that represent the various interagency, the Department of State, and, you know, and, and others. And then we have one six International Fellows, and then we have uh, one six the Department of Defense uh, Civilians. And, and so when you get that kind of, that kind of, of diversity and that, and that in a seminar and on our faculty, you can't help but to really start to um, increase the understanding and build, build relationships that, that enable us to, to, uh, to uh, leverage those relationships in the midst of, of challenging times rather than having to, cr to create those relationships uh, in adversity. So to all the supporters, I, I, really, uh, I really appreciate everything that you've meant to the university, and, uh, and I know there's more out there, I don't, I, I, but, but I thank you for everything. Uh, to Vice Admiral Rogie and, and to Julie uh, and to your family, uh, I, I, tell you, I can tell you that, uh, again, right man for the job, if there's ever been one. Uh, just, he's, you're gonna, he, he asks really good questions. And, uh, and, and, I, and I'm actually one of the very few Marines that served in the submarine force I'm, as a Marine, believe that or not. I mean, I was the CEO of a Marine attachment on the USS Canopus in Submarine Squadron 16 years ago. And so I know the submarine Navy, and I know how they, how they, they how detour-oriented they can be, and how analytical they can be, and and uh, and and he he has that. But as General Dunford mentioned, he combines that with a a uh, the the art and science with a great personality and a and a very engaging way about himself. And I I think that again the the univ the university is is poised to just take off under your leadership. And I wish you all the best. And I hope you get that house in the near future, because that's going to make things a lot better. And I know, because. But uh, again, uh, lastly, I just want to just uh, summarize by saying how proud I have been to serve with all of you here at the National Defense University, and uh, and 
I, and I, I'm really proud to have represented this university as the president, both here in the United States and abroad. And, and I wish you all the best for continued success. And I thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing or rise for the reading of the orders. Attention to orders. Two, Major General Frederick M. Padilla, 15th President of the National Defense University. You are hereby requested and required to relinquish command of the National Defense University to Vice Admiral Frederick J. Rogi on this 25th day of September 2017. Signed, Joseph F. Dunford, Jr., Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. The passing of the colors is a time-honored military tradition which signifies the passing of responsibility from the outgoing president, Major General Frederick M. Padilla, to the incoming president. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff now passes the colors of the university and all governing responsibilities to the incoming president, Vice Admiral Frederick J. Rogi. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the 16th president of the National Defense University, Vice Admiral Frederick J. Rogi. Chairman, uh, admirals and generals, distinguished guests, faculty, staff, and students of the National Defense University, friends and families, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and aloha. <laughs> My guiding principle today is to follow the ABCs appropriate for any incoming leader, although more accurately, it's really just three Bs. So I will be brief, be sincere, and be seated. So uh, let me begin by uh, simply saying some thank yous. So first, uh, thank you, General Dunford, for the opportunity to lead NDU. It is humbling to have been selected for this post. Uh, Julie and I are very excited and thankful for this opportunity to advance your vision for your university. For General Padilla, Fred, thank you for the excellent turnover and more importantly, for turning over such an excellent organization. I've been very impressed by what I've seen here and I look forward to the challenges and the opportunities to continue the exceptional work that we heard so uh, eloquently listed in that uh, award citation. And thanks as well to the many shipmates of Julie and I, shipmates, mentors, friends, and family, many present here today, many more joining us in spirit, without whose support uh, Julie and I wouldn't be here today. And of course, a very special thank you to my wife, Julie. Uh, every commissioned officer knows that we serve at the pleasure of the president. However, it is just as clear to every one of us that such service is enabled. In fact, it is only possible at the pleasure of the family. And Julie, everyone who knows us knows we are here today because of you. And finally, to the faculty and staff of NDU, thank you for building the legacy of academic excellence that I, too, am now privileged to enjoy and to which I hope to contribute. Because this is a great time to be serving our nation, but as the chairman pointed out, it's also a very challenging time. And while it's always a privilege to serve, that's particularly the case in times like these when the challenges are so great and our nation expects and demands so much from us all. And to meet these challenges, it's not enough to have technological superiority. Our advantage, the thing provides our strategic advantage, isn't just technology, it is our people. And to put it in terms of my own tribe of submariners, today's submarine force has the world's most impressive technology, but without the crew, the only thing a submarine is capable of is to sit alongside a pier and rust. It is our people that will always provide the margin to victory, and it is their daily demonstration in peacetime of the ability to fight and to win that is the best means to assure our allies and to deter potential adversaries. And it is our mission at NDU to develop that human capital, specifically to develop leaders who have the ability to operate and creatively think in an unpredictable and complex world, and that is vitally important work. What you do every day makes our students just as effective at launching ideas as launching ordnance. 
And that makes a huge difference to our military, to our whole of government, to our nation, and to our allies around the world. I'm proud to become a part of this team, and I look forward to meeting these challenges with you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remain in place for the benediction and departure of the official party. Chaplain Kenneth Williams will now offer the benediction. I'd like to invite everyone to join with me in putting an exclamation mark on this ceremony. So at the conclusion of the prayer, I'm going to say, and all the people said, and the biblical response is amen, but perhaps you didn't know that amen comes across to our language as oorah or hoorah or whatever you want to say. And so uh, just as a celebration of General Padilla's service and welcoming our new president, would you join me in the benediction? Gracious and merciful God, we do want peace. We want security. We want safety. We want the freedom to thrive as individuals, as teams, as family members. And we know that it will only take place as we continue to teach and train and live and practice the values and the principles that have made us strong throughout the centuries. So I commit to you, the faculty and staff of the National Defense University, that may we wake up every day seeking ways that we can prepare strategic leaders for the future. We commit Major General Padilla to your care and guidance as he continues to serve our nation. I commit to your care, wisdom, and strength our incoming President, Vice Admiral Rogi, and commit to you our wonderful, amazing leaders like General Dunford and our Secretary of Defense, Mattis. And I ask that you would watch over and protect all our forces deployed around the world and all of our allies and their leaders. God bless us and God bless America. And all the people said, Amen. <laughs> Amen. This concludes today's ceremony. Thank you for your attendance. You are cordially invited to join Vice Admiral Rogi and Major General Padilla in the Marshall Hall atrium for a light reception. Both will be available to receive you, and you're welcome to visit either or both while you enjoy the reception. Thank you.